Hey everyone, I'm continuing my book, uh, Put Your Dream to the Test. And today I'm focusing on the point of pay the price of dealing with criticism from people who matter. Whatever course you decide upon, there's always someone to tell you that you are wrong. There are always difficulties arising which tempt you to believe that your critics are right. To map out a course of action and follow it to an end requires courage. So everyone who pursues a dream is criticized. And if you're thick skinned, most of it won't bother you. But if you're like me, most of it will bother you. <laughs> so you have to learn how to not let it bother you so that it doesn't become debilitating. And so that you can keep moving forward and you can keep um, taking steps and one of the things that we can do, especially when it's people who are close to us, who are around us, is we can love unconditionally. So when I decided I was going to do my masters under the guidance of Sister Kathleen Flynn and Michael Kalachik, I didn't tell anyone because I knew they'd say, oh, you can't do it. You think you can do these things. Who do you think you are? I just did it. I just took the courses step by step, I accomplished it, and I finished it. Because I got tired of dealing with that, and I got tired of getting hurt. So my strategy is to just focus on my life and stay away. And it happens with everything, right? It can happen when, for example, when my mother got remarried. She called me and told me, oh, we're no longer just friends, I'm getting married. So obviously I was devastated. I was crying. I was like, what? You told me you're just friends. Now you're getting married. But over time I accepted it and I got used to it. And I like my mother's husband very much. He's a nice man. But when I tell people that my mother told me she did her duty and she wants to live her life now, her responsibilities are done. People don't believe me. And I, I'm like, what? It's like, oh, it's nice you reconciled with your mom. There was no disagreement. She wanted something for her life, and I accepted it. And that's how I am with people. If they come to me and say, I don't want to be your friend today. From now on, I don't want anything more to do with you. It will hurt me, but I'll accept it. I'll still love them. But people don't believe me, so they take it out on me. So I've learned that, you know what, <laughs> if they want to believe, they can believe. If they don't want to believe, that's not really my problem, as long as I know that I told the truth. And we can still pursue our dreams, we can still take action. Sometimes things are very hard, like for my team now, for all of us who got let go, you know, it's, it's hard because we don't know uh, what hours we're going to have, we don't know, like, what our income might be. It might be you no know, little less or it might be more. Everything's still in flux because they're confirming everything still. But at least we've got jobs to go to and we can keep looking out for other things. And with me, nobody has any mercy on me. <laughs> I don't expect them to anymore. When I write to people, when I tell them how hard things are, they just say, oh, we'll pray for you. And I appreciate the prayers, but there's no help. There's no financial help except from my mom and my aunt, um, my godmother. There's no, oh, here, there's a job. Maybe you can apply to this. And it was the same thing when I lived in South Africa. I wanted to stay in that residence for a year so I could save some money. And that was a strategy that the Graham Fusion had in place. He would allow some of the students when they graduated to stay for a year and to save money. When I asked Peter Knox, he said, no, I'm not Graham, you're not staying here, you graduated, get on with your life. So I left and the only person that helped me was my former professor, uh, professor um, Matthew Gross, that he helped me to find a job because I wanted to stay in South Africa. So that's how I got into Johannesburg Child Welfare. But it's very hard when you've grown up without a dad and you turn to people and they criticize you or they belittle you or they say you are the problem. 
it's it's very very hard but i've learned to just deal with it in my own way and i've learned to say you know what this is what it is and i have to keep moving forward so for all of us who are going through looking for our new positions or we're waiting for confirmation it's a tough time it's very hard i watched this documentary on south africa and they have the system in place to do where they are they're basically um getting all the foreigners out of the country and to do or something like that but there was this older guy on this documentary older gentleman and he was saying my mother was born in south africa and my father was born in rhodesia and they don't want me here so it's very hard when you hear things like that and i thank god that i'm in south i'm not in south africa because i love south africa just like i love zimbabwe but thank god i'm not there because probably i would be targeted and it's hard when there's no jobs when people are looking for work i mean i've been fortunate here in that i got my citizenship i took my exams i passed everything but i also earn my citizenship i don't take it for granted i try to do the right things i know my rights i know my responsibilities i don't take advantage of people i don't take advantage of the system so i try to do what is right by canada and i'm glad i'm not in zimbabwe i wouldn't want to go back what the way things are going now they turning to the arab nations to get the funding they want to build luxury apartments and hotels and all that on whose backs it's going to be on their own people's backs and the arabs already got criticized for what they did with the world cup because they took advantage of people they on the they are on the list for human rights watch so you have to choose who to follow and you have to choose who you who you follow because dreams are not free manifesting is not free it requires taking action and even with bono who i help with the one campaign people say oh you know he's like this he's like that how could he do this to this one how could he do that to that one we all have people who criticize us he's done the best that he can and he's done what's good for his campaign and for what's good for his volunteers for us So I don't pay too much attention to it because otherwise I wouldn't be still helping him and volunteering with him. And you know, I've put my heart into it because I had hoped that things would change with the African leaders. I had hoped that the news coming out wouldn't be about children being trafficked and women being trafficked and all the things that Robert Mugabe fought for. would continue to be built upon but i see they're going to the arabs for the funding so we'll see how it goes because when we lobby for african countries we also have to use our voices so i don't pay too much attention to what people say about bono he also went through his own struggles where he didn't have the support he wanted from his band members from his family to do what he did for africa so i i just say well that's your life you want to think like that think like that i'm glad i didn't go back to zimbabwe and even my own uncle was saying it might be the only way i never said anything because when i say something then i get people come at me they go after me so i don't say anything because obviously they want me to say you are right and i am wrong and my voice doesn't matter and i was not raised that way i was raised by my grandparents especially my grandfather my dad my grandmother that if i disagreed with something or if i had something to say i said it and we would sit and talk about it i never got told off i never got shut down i never got told well you are wrong so why would i bother to engage in conversation if that's the way it's going to go i'm not stupid i know that i'm dealing with educated people but i'm also an educated woman and bono's love for us as volunteers is very clear 
It's very clear to people. So I don't care what they say, really. Whatever comments I post and things for him, I do it out of my love for him. He can take it as my love for him, or he can say, well, I don't like this. It's up to him. At the end of the day, he's a grown man. He has a lot more life experience than me. So that's the way I look at things now. I'm hoping and praying that I get a break. But it's very, it's very disconcerting when you see what's happening, the layoffs, how many people are getting let go from jobs and what opportunities are opening up. It's very hard to make ends meet. And when you apply to the banks like me for an increase in your overdraft or an increase in your line of credit, and they tell you, yes, apply for it, you'll get it, and then you don't get it. It's very hard because I've got nobody to fall back on. I've got no savings. And once my mother's gonna, once my mother's not going to be around to help me, what's going to happen to me? I bought that place as an investment when I bought it at Rosewell Gardens so that when I got to this age where I'm close to retirement, I could at least sell that. Now I have nothing. And I reach out to so many people, so many people that know me, the priests, the nuns, the business leaders, nobody helps me. No one. So it's very hard. It's very, very hard. And HSBC, the one bank that stood up for me, they left Canada and they're very profitable. And my hat's off to them. Why would they stay when they gave them so much grief? Why? So anyway, I just take it as it comes, but you know, criticism is part of the journey. It's part of the dream. And if you're not gonna take the criticism, you might as well give up on your dreams. Just don't bother. They won't manifest. If you don't invest in yourself, no one's gonna bother. You have to invest in yourself and you have to believe in your dreams and be open to change. And I don't care what people say about Bono. I've been with him for too long. I don't really care. The criticism's always gonna be there, always.